last. White man, black man, America F1. America F1, coming to you straight from San Francisco, California, Sherman Tillman, Michael Lawler. America F1. We would be honored if you would join us. We would be honored if you would join us. All right. Welcome to another episode of America F1. Today, we're going to talk about the Chinese Grand Prix that was in Shanghai. And before we get into it, there's breaking news, there's breaking news, there's breaking news that Hewlett Packard HP is going to be a title sponsor for Ferrari in 2025. The Lewis Hamilton effect is in full force. All the sponsors are coming to Ferrari. A lot of them are leaving Mercedes. They're even leaving Mercedes this year and want to renegotiate their deal. And Toto Wolf is in his least professional demeanor that I've ever seen. We'll get into it later on in the show. But we always like to remember to remind you to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Because we like to bring you content about the great sport of Formula One. So we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, YouTube, TikTok, as long as it's around. We also have an Instagram page. It's called America Media F1 or it's America Media, it's called. So you can go on Instagram. You can go to TikTok, America F1. You can go to YouTube, America F1, M-E-R-I-C-A-F-1. You can also find, we have a YouTube page, like a fan group. It's called America F1. You can go there on Facebook and join up. We only have like 50 people because we don't even, I think it's 54 on Facebook. We don't even really, you know, I mean, it's Facebook. Facebook's, you know. Facebook just doesn't let people say what they want, so we don't really, you know, but go, subscribe, check it out, comment, and, you know, we're really picking up a really good pace here, we're picking up a lot of subscribers, we also want to remind you that for the next 72 hours, that's right, today is 423, so for the next 20 no, it's not even 24. Matter of fact, I think it's the next 72. So that's 72. So it's the next 48 hours. That's right. The next 48 hours. You can use our discount code at Doobie Energy Drink. And instead of 10% off for the next 48 hours, you're going to get 20% off of Doobie Energy Drink. Using the code America F1, M-E-R-I-C-A. F1 at Doobie Energy Drink. Doobie Energy Drink increases your focus, energy, and fun. Get a Doobie today. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now let's get back to our show. Now that we've got all the sponsor stuff away. The FIA. Did you see it this week? Did you see it at the Shanghai Grand Prix? Did you see Valtteri Bottas car right by the turn, him out of the car, no barrier, nothing in between him and the cars coming at him, still racing. They put a yellow flag on there. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I was there when Jules Bianchi passed away in Japan. Or he passed away later, but he had the horrible accident with the tractor. I was also there when Pierre Gasly like flipped out because it was raining and there was a tractor near the track. Tractor near the track. That's a tongue twister. I did it. I did it perfectly. Yeah, I know I did. Thank you. Thank you. And he flipped out on the radio because the safety of our drivers is supposed to be paramount. And that was 
not a yellow. That was not a virtual safety car. That was a safety car. There's a driver right off of the track at a turn when we know that they had just resurfaced the Shanghai circuit. All the drivers were complaining about it being slippery. All the drivers were complaining about it. They didn't really like this track. They had resurfaced it. And when you resurface a track, there's there's a lot of sliding that goes on. The oil sits a lot on top of the tarmac. It doesn't like seep in or it doesn't easily wash off because it's brand new. So it just sits there for a while. It doesn't permeate inside the track. It doesn't roll off the track. Plus, they only had... They had the sprint race, but they didn't have like F2 or F3 or or some other sister Porsche racing or Ferrari to, to kind of get the track evolution a little bit better. But it's a brand new track, so it's really going to take some time. So considering all that, that was a safety car. At minimum, a virtual safety car. And what had happened, and it was strange how it happened. It was a yellow, then it was, then it went to virtual, then it went to safe. I mean, it, it's like they almost didn't know what to do. And that brings me to the point I've been trying to make about this FIA is we need stewards, the same stewards for every race, a group of them. Just like the NBA, just like in soccer, just like in American football, just like in basketball, we need professional stewards. We don't need ex drivers and people who know a little bit about racing to come in for one race or one race. Like it's like, hey Jensen Button, you remember? Hey you, you're a racer. Hey, do you wanna you wanna kind of umpire this race this weekend? I mean, it's like going up to like. Barry Bonds or uh, who, who's a better, a good example for everybody to understand. It's like going up to Michael Jordan, who was the ex-basketball player and, you know, the greatest basketball player ever to live and saying, hey, Mike, I know we have the NBA finals this weekend and I, and I know you're in town. Would you mind coming out and refing this game? Because, I mean, you were a great player. You know, you know how. And that's what they do. They just, hey, you want to come be a steward this weekend? No, man, no. It has to be the same people. We have to have continuity because I was there when this happened to Jules. I was there when Pierre Gasly freaked out. It's not great for these drivers to think about driving and then now thinking about their safety because there's a driver right off of the track he's the turn goes like this he's right there and they're turning right in front of the guy i mean come on come on if i and you know why do why does formula one need the fia anyway like what like why are they letting some other body that actually does other motorsports, not just Formula One, be in control of these rules. They keep messing it up. They keep it so inconsistent. So why are we putting up with it as fans? Why are the constructors putting up with it as people who are putting millions and billions of dollars into their sport, into their teams? It's unacceptable. Remember when Mercedes was ahead and they were winning, Lewis Hamilton was winning all their titles and they're winning, you know, seven or eight constructor titles in a row. It was the DOS. They got rid of that. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, it's the front wing. Oh, yeah, this front wing. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. That's illegal. Oh, this rear wing. Oh, you, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Oh, that floor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah you can't do that. I mean, time after time, not only with Mercedes, but if you can go back to the Schumacher days, even with Ferrari, they're always bringing out something to stop the onslaught of Mercedes or to stop the onslaught of Ferrari. What have they done for Red Bull? Come on, tell me. What have they done to stop this Red Bull train? Max Verstappen's car is the fastest F1 car ever. Ever. It's just dominant. Like no one has any chance unless Max DNFs. They don't have a chance. 
And of course, yes, 20, at least probably 20% is that, is that max? Of course. I'm not going to say he's not a good driver, but it's a lot easier to drive out in front because remember when Vettel was driving out in front, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. When he came back into the pack, he made a lot of mistakes and we all saw it. And it's the same thing with Max. Hey, he's out in front. There's not too many mistakes to make. You're in clean air. No one's around you. You're just just kind of twiddling your thumbs, checking out, you know, your what records you're going to play tonight and where you're going to go for dinner because you don't have any challenge. Like, like you're, you're, you're a second lap faster than everybody. What do you what do you care? You know, you're out there. But when you see him come back to the pack, it's a little different. Right. We remember Max, they called him crashed up and we had all those problems in there. People would say, oh, well, that was when he was younger. That was when he was younger. But I mean, it's the reality you have more cars around you, there's going to be more mistakes. More mistakes by them, more mistakes by you. It's just look at the midfield. There's mistakes all over, people crashing all over the place. So my point is, does Formula One really need the FIA? And can Formula One be a self-governing body like NASCAR, IndyCar? Is it just a European thing? Because, you know, they have that in European soccer. They have the federation that oversees with the rules. Like the NFL, they have the commissioner's office, but that's part of the NFL. It's not a separate entity. Like the FIA is a separate entity. So why? They have it in soccer too. European soccer. Why is my question? Because to me, and to a lot of other people, it doesn't seem to be working out. So I think that Formula One should be self-governing. I really do. I don't really think they really need this FIA. I think they can break away from the FIA. And even Ben Suleiman, the president of <laughs> Formula One, or the FIA, he's even said it. Like, why? Like, maybe there's a time that there should be a divergence from this. And don't be surprised, is what he said. Don't be surprised if one day the FIA and Formula One go their separate ways. Maybe it's time because if we keep getting these penalties that don't make sense, like like in the sprint race, right? Norris, they deleted. It says you're off of the track. Your time's supposed to be deleted. People were saying, okay, well, they delete, they deleted it, but then they brought it back, but then... Lewis Hamilton was on pole. They told him he was on pole. And so he had an, he could have done another lap, but he uh, he just averted that lap and aborted it because, well, if I'm already on pole, why do I need to do another lap? So he, 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 he stopped doing the lap and then they reinstate and then Norris gets on pole. <laughs> A lot of people were saying like the memes all over like, oh, Hamilton's got pole. FIA, oh no, that can't happen. You can't yeah. let reinstate, reinstate Norris's lap, reinstate Norris's lap so he can't have it. <laughs> I think it might be time for the FIA and Formula One to part ways. Not just because of the safety that I think issue that they totally missed on this and they totally botched it, in my opinion. Because I like Valtteri and it could have been any driver, just any driver near the track when you're coming straight toward him. Cause that, at that turn, look at it. Look, I'll post it. They're coming straight at the guy and then they turn. That is a safety car instantly. Cause remember a yellow is a hazard coming up. It doesn't say if it's on the track or off the track. It could be both. It doesn't, it doesn't really specify a safety car and virtual safety car. Double yellows, red, all those things. There's something on the track. On the track. That's a big difference between something could be on the track or off the track than something on the track. So my final point on that is it may be time to look into having permanent stewards. One, if we're going to continue with this FIA farce. Let's have permanent stewards that they're the same people doing the race for the whole year. Then we might have some consistency because then 
we won't get all these stupid penalties where you're like, well, that's five seconds, but then this is 10 seconds, but then this is lap deleted, but this this isn't lap deleted. I mean, it's just too convoluted, and you're always guessing, and you're making interpretations, and you're leaving things up to interpretation. It's either black and white or it's not. In basketball, either it's a foul or it isn't. Either he made the shot or he didn't. I don't Okay. Now, it was a pretty decent race. It was kind of exciting for everybody because there were, you know, we had Lance Stroll crashing into Danny Ricardo. We had Kevin Magnuson taking out Yuki Sonoda. We had, you know, it was a fairly good race from Haas. Um, the Hulkenberg, he scored a point. And when we do our 10, let's do our 10 to 1. Hulkenberg finished in 10th. He qualified 9th. That's great for that team. For Haas to score a point, that is awesome. And Hulkenberg is chipping away at that. He gets a point here, a point there. That's great for this team. Usually, 10th place, I think, should be looking at all the paces probably Lance Stroll or Yuki should be there but they both remember Stroll <laughs> he took out Daniel Ricardo and he, he blamed the concertia effect which I, I've never heard of which is kind of like I heard of the con- like accordion effect which is a car crashes like on your highway when you're driving on the highway and a car crashes ahead of you and then one car stops, another car stops, and because of all these cars stopping, one car crashes into the car in front of them. Because when you're driving, if you took advanced driving, you're supposed to drive ahead. You're not looking at the car that's right ahead of you. You're looking down the road at what's happening down there so you can react for what's happening right in front of you. That's that's driving, and that's what they teach you at racing school. And I know Lance Stroll has had many racing schools because, you know, daddy paid for everything. So he's had (laughs) more classes and more help than probably any driver on the grid. I mean, he has it all, anything. He probably has, he has probably physio, he has probably a chef. I mean, the guy probably has anything and everything he needs for a driver. He's probably the most pampered driver other than Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton of the grid. And I don't even think those guys are pampered like Lance because, you know, his dad's a billionaire. So he's... He gets everything. He probably has a manicure sitting around. He's probably sitting in his car. Someone's doing his toes. I mean, come on. He <laughs> tried to blame Daniel Ricardo, and Daniel wasn't having it. He wasn't having it. He was like, what? That really pisses me off. Right here. You can check it out right here. I'll post it right here. That really pisses me off. Like, he really said that? Like, I looked at his onboards. And he's not even looking ahead of him. He's looking at the apex of the turn. And people were like, whoa, whoa, racing. You look at the apex of the turn. <laughs> no. It's a safety car. You don't, you're not racing anybody. You can't pass anybody. What are you looking at the apex for? Look at what's in front of you. And then look a little ahead to see what they're doing. Because we all know Max or Lewis, or who's ever in front, controls the place under the safety car. They all go slow. They all crawl. Because they're waiting for the safety car to go in. And then they decide before that white line when they're going to hit it. Okay? It happens time after time. This is nothing new. He shouldn't have been surprised because it always happens this way. Mike would say he just ran out of talent. And I think that's what happened. He ran out of talent. The guy wasn't paying attention. He ran into the car. Just say, my bad. I'm sorry. You know, I kind of had a lapse of concentration and I ran to him, but he blamed the, <laughs> the concertia effect, which is when cars ahead. Once again, cars are ahead of you or stopping, stopping, stopping. And then because of all these abrupt stops, you run into the car ahead of you. So, you know, I, I would say it's a gem of an excuse. It's an excuse I've never heard of before. So, hey, you know, he pulled one out of his hat that we all had to look up and was like, what's he talking about? In ninth place, Lewis Hamilton. He, I don't really understand what happened as far as his qualifying. He qualified in 18th. He didn't make it out of the 
first round of qualifying? I mean, Mercedes didn't make it out of the first round of qualifying? And I'll tell you why. And listen, this is why. Because Mercedes still thinks they're a front-running team. I've said it on shorts. I've said it before. I said it last week. I said it the week before. They're not. They're a midfield team. Midfield teams need to go early into qualifying. Why? They need to get their two laps in. And because if they make the track evolution, of course, is going to get better as the cars run on the tarmac and run on the uh, race circuit. And the times will get lower and lower and lower as they go. So you run those two to get your laps in, right? Get your time in. And then you go into the garage, do a couple changes, and then come out for another two. That's what they need to start doing. But what they do and what they have been doing is like what the front runners do. They just wait till near the time's almost up. They can get two laps in. They get a warm-up lap, and then they just do one hero lap, and that's it, right? Because we're trying to be last so we can get the best track evolution. Well, those days are gone, man. You're not you're not going to get pole. You're not rushing up there with Ferrari, Red Bull, uh, McLaren, not even Aston Martin. OK, you're not doing that. You're, you're in the midfield. Get out there four times. Get two early laps in. Come in, change the tires or whatever you do and go out and get another two laps in because Hamilton made a mistake on his hero lap. And that was it. That was it. 18th. But he had a good recovery. Finishing nice, some great passes, some really good spots, and it was exciting to see him come through the field. He also finished second in the sprint race, and he was in front for what 10, 11 laps for quite a while until Max, you know, passed him up. Max had some problems with his uh, energy recovery system, and once they got that fixed, it was lights out. Bye bye, see you later. And he actually ended up in like I think it was in like nine or ten laps. He ended up putting like thirteen seconds in between him and Hamilton. That just shows you the pace of that car. And Max had, I think he had qualified uh, for the sprint race. He had qualified like fourth. So that's that's just shows you the pace of that car and what Max was stepping driving that car. Also, Total Wolf. Since we're on Hamilton, has been saying some really strange stuff. Like, I'll put it up here. He's been saying things like, well, Lewis is happy. Like, why is he happy? Did you hear me what I just said? Like, he should be basically, Toto thinks he should be grumpy because, you know, the Mercedes is not doing that well. And Hamilton qualified in 18th. So he's like, that's not usually him. Usually he's, you know, mad and pouting and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what? Total, you, he, if you look at some of the things he's been saying lately, hey, man, maybe him and Lewis need to go have lunch because, dude, what are you doing? Like, this guy brought you all these championships. What are you doing talking about him like that? Just shut your mouth, dude. Get to work and get some new engineers because all the engineers are leaving and you're not replacing them with much, apparently, because the car has been a mess for three years. Come on, man. Do your job. Stop talking about Lewis. And another thing why I'm on this diatribe of ranting. Why is Lewis Hamilton always doing the testing of all these different setups? If George Russell is supposed to be the lead driver now coming up next year, make him do all the testing. Unless he can't give good feedback. And that's why they've been trying to go out and get Alonzo. That's why they were trying to go out and give her step. In. That's why they're trying to get, you know, Carlos. That's why they're trying to get another really, really good driver in the seat. Because if they have Kimi Antonelli come, I mean, he's a young kid. Well, I mean, how much feedback is he giving on the direction of the car? Probably not that much. He's just fast and he's just quick. He's young. So that's why they want another driver. If they get along, if they would have gotten, because Alonzo resigned, if they would have got Alonzo in a car, he would have destroyed George. If they would have got Carlos Sainz in a car, I think they would have been probably George would out qualify Carlos Sainz. But I think in the race, race pace, Carlos makes less mistakes and probably would have beat him head to head. And then Max would, I mean, that's a whole different ball game. Max would destroy George Russell. That wouldn't, that wouldn't even, that's not even something that I would even contemplate that George would have a chance at. I, I think there's two drivers. Like if they went into the team like Alonzo or 
or Max, the game over for George. It would be game over. And like Lewis is checked. People are saying he's checked out. Oh, he's not checked out. He's just like he knows he made the right decision. That's why. That's why he's happy, because at the end of the day, he knows there's new sponsors coming to Ferrari. He knows his worth and his value. And when he looked at that Mercedes contract, he felt that they didn't value him. And now he's going to a place that does value him. That's why he's happy. And that's why he's smiling, because he was right. Oscar Piatri finished in eighth place. He qualified in fifth. He had some damage. And so he kind of went back in the pack. He lost some positions. And even though he had a diffuser issue, um, he still kept Lewis behind him, which shows you the pace difference between uh, the McLaren and the mothership principal team. Mercedes. Think about it. Two customer teams are beating Mercedes right now. Aston Martin's beating the brakes off them. And so is McLaren. And McLaren's way ahead of them. And they're sister teams. They're customer teams. Mercedes is the one supplying them the engine. So it tells you that the aero package is just not that great. And the concept, like Lewis has been saying, it's just they had the wrong concept. And they're really behind, when you think about it, a whole year compared to the grid because they went one way with the concept and when Lewis was telling them in 22 hey this is not working we should go another way then it could have been on par and even by now with or even ahead in you know the 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 wars of upgrades the upgrade wars and bringing new cars and new parts to your your car to give your driver a better up on the competition and give you better lap times and give you better handling and cornering and all, all these things that go into arrow working with the engine and the engineers. But when you consider that McLaren is clearly ahead of Mercedes and Aston Martin, in my estimation, when you look at Fernando Alonso's car, not not Lance Stroll, but Fernando Alonso, they're, they're ahead of Mercedes. So Mercedes has the fifth best car in this grid right now. And they're supposed to be having some upgrades come to Miami. And we'll see. It's a street track. So maybe they'll make a difference. In seventh place was Fernando Alonso. He qualified third. And they had some very strange strategy. Just strange. I don't really understand it. They came in and put in softs. Like mid-race. Like near near the end of the race. And then they had to go back to the hards, fresh hards to, you know, uh, and then he was, he came in, I think it was 11th at that time on that stint. And then he recovered through the field to seventh because he was flying and ended up getting the fastest lap. He might even put on mediums instead of hards. Um, but he was saying the reason why they did that is because they used up too much tires in the sprint race. And he's saying, oh, the sprint race is useless. It's using up our tires. And maybe we should have a different allocation for the sprint race and a different allocation for the actual race. And that made sense to me. I was like, huh. Because you're using up different tires in the sprint. But usually with the sprint. You put on the mediums and you just, they just go the whole race. You don't have to change any tires. You just usually put on the mediums and that goes from lap one to lap 19 or 20. And that's it. So I think that was more of a strategy mistake on Aston Martin's part. Because remember, Alonzo qualified third. He probably had the pace to keep. Eh, he probably had the pace to be fourth. Because Perez was probably going to end up passing him eventually. And with all the different safety cars that they had, I think it was just a a strategy mistake. And they had a good recovery to just get seventh. Now, George Russell, he qualified eighth and he finished sixth. Because remember, Piastri had a diffuser issue because of a crash or somebody ran into him. And then Alonzo had the strange strategy that Austin Martin put him in with the soft tires on one of the stints instead of mediums or hards. 
like everybody else. So Russell probably would have finished eighth without those problems that Aston Martin strategy brought to the car or Piastri's diffuser issue. It was a whole hum race, in my opinion, by George Russell. I mean, this is pretty pretty much where their car is. If they finish sixth, that's actually a win for Mercedes right now. Um, I don't see them being on the podium anytime soon. It could happen, but in the fifth best car. And another thing, where is that George Russell signature drive? Think about it. When have you seen this year or even last year, like a drive where you're like, oh, man, George Russell's on it. Like, that was a great drive by George Russell. Wow, that was a great pass by George Russell. When's that memory? I, I, I can't seem to recall that. But this is the guy they want to lead the team. So they either saw something in, in him, I guess, at Williams, and now with the data, they probably have a different idea in the feedback. Because where's that great drive from George Russell, right? Everyone's all there. He's going to be a world champion one day. He's going to be a world. No, I don't think so. Because even if they do under the new regulations, say they brought a rocket ship. I think whoever his competition would be would beat him. Like whoever the sister car they get, if they put Carlos Sainz in there for a one-year contract, or if they just bring Kimi, well, I think he'd beat Kimi Antonelli just because he's new. But you never know. Could be a Lewis Hamilton uh, rookie year. He could show all this great pace and give Russell fits. They said that they had a test with Kimi Antonelli recently, and he did great. And they were raving about it but of course they're gonna rave about it they're not gonna be like oh he sucks you know so that that might be a little pr spin but however the point is and i'm saying it to you out there where's the george russell signature drive you tell me put it down in the comments below and don't tell me it's the one race he won because that hit there was other factors involved for him to win that race he did win so I never, when you win a Formula One race, I never take anything away from you. Like you won, it's hard to win. There's so many guys who haven't won. So hats off for him. But that is not a signature drive. Tell me his signature drive. And don't go back to Williams. I'm talking about with Mercedes, okay? And don't go back to F2 and don't go back to F3 and don't go back to when he was in carts. All right. Tell me a signature of since he's been at Mercedes and not. The one race he won. Okay? All right. Carlos, sign, 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 in fifth place. He qualified seventh pretty. Uh, this Ferraris didn't seem to have the pace that they normally do in Shanghai. Maybe it was the new tarmac. I, I don't know. Maybe it was, you know, not having driven there in, you know, five years. Maybe that has something to do with it. But what I do know that Charles Leclerc said that they need to look at and talk about and have a conversation about all the fighting that Leclerc and Sainz are doing on the track. And he's saying that's detracting from the pace of fighting the field. And I remember him saying, well, this guy fights me more than he fights the field. He's, he was referring to Carlos Sainz. So there might be something there. I don't know if there's a little friction there because Carlos is kind of maybe he's mad that he's leaving the team and he's thought he did a good job, which I thought he did. But, you know, like I said, you can't compare yourself to Lewis Hamilton. Be happy that if they're making a change, it's Lewis they're making a change for. Right. Be happy. Or if if it was uh, Verstappen making the change, be happy. It's one of the all time greats. So that says a lot about you, that that's what they had to go out to replace me with. But it also says since he's been driving so well this year. I mean, Carlos Sainz, man, he's the hottest property in Formula One right now. He's the guy that everybody's knocking on his door. So he has a lot of choices. Uh, I heard from the Audi project that he needs to make this choice if he's going to drive with Audi or not, because they're saying they're going to be moving on. If if he doesn't want to be their number one driver, they're 
going to be moving on. And I also have heard, you know, that Yuki Sonoda could be going there or and also uh, Hulkenberg could be going there. So, you know, there's 13 seats available next year. There's going to be, you know, it's going to be a silly season. It's going to be awesome. Charles Leclerc finished in fourth place. He qualified six. And like he said, you know, maybe the fighting between them is taking away their pace to fight the others. It just was just one of those races, I think, for Ferrari. It's just because of the safety cars and all the, the crashing and just it was just a disjointed kind of race. I think they did well to finish in fourth and fifth because it didn't they didn't make any strategy mistakes. It's just one of those things where they were track position. They'd come in or, and then there'd be a safety car or a virtual safety. And then other people would come in and then, you know, the positions would get all switched on, on track. It was just one of those days, man. So fourth and fifth was good for Ferrari. In third place, Carlo Checo Sergio Perez. He qualified second and he finished third. He had a great double pass, if you guys saw it, when uh, Leclerc and Sainz were fighting. And I think it was at that time, it might have been Leclerc and Russell or Leclerc, Sainz, or Russell, one of those three, there were two cars were fighting, and then Perez goes and passed both of them. <laughs> and unlike when Hamilton passed both cars and, and Silverstone last year, he kept going. He was gone. Like he passed both of them, and that was the end of story. So I thought that was a great pass by uh, Checo, very opportunistic. But I also thought and also think he's proving. Every race that he belongs at Red Bull, stop talking about Tom, Dick, and Harry coming to the car. You won a championship every year with Checo. He's proven that he's a good driver, a good solid number two. Just let give him another contract and let let's move on. That, that's it. Give give a guy another contract and move on. Stop stop it with let's bring somebody else into the car. Let's let's stop that nonsense right now. Lando Norris, the Wookie. Qualified fourth, finished in second place. I mean, Lando had good pace. I mean, everyone was thinking Checo was going to catch him. He didn't. Land and Lando wasn't too far behind Max on some of the some of the laps. He was having good pace. I mean, this was a good drive by Lando. You know, it was a little disappointing what he did in the sprint race. And he, he remember he qualified first in the sprint. And then Lewis Hamilton overtook him on the first turn because he got a better start. And then Lando kind of did a kind of did a kind of clunky rookie mistake, where instead of just pulling back and just tucking in behind Hamilton in second, and he probably within a couple laps would have been able to pass Hamilton with DRS on a straight, and then just continue on with his race because the McLarens have better pace than the Mercedes at this point. He kind of kind of tried to save it, kind of lost it because remember it's a new new tarmac and it's 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 a brand new they put down new uh tar and rubber here it's 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 a new track, okay? New. They resurfaced it. So he kind of slid off and he tumbled down the field in that sprint race. He tumbled. And he went from pole position all the way down to like 6th, 7th place. So that's just one of those things. It's his fault, 100% his fault. That's one of those things you have to learn. Like, I can't win the race on the first lap or the first turn. If I make a mistake or the other driver gets a better start, then let me just tuck in behind and continue on my race. That's why there's 19 or 20 laps or 23 laps in a sprint race. That's why there's 55 to 59 or 60 laps in a regular race because you cannot win the race on the first turn. Now, there are lots of tracks where you got to be in front because your car maybe is not as superior as the other car and you want to get ahead because you know that's your only chance. But in this case, tuck behind, Pass Hamilton later. And then he would have got his first win, probably. 
I think Max would have ended up passing him to probably lap 13, 14. He would have got him because his pace was that once they fixed that problem with the recovery system that, that the Red Bull was having, his car was just another level. It was gone. And of course, in first place, Super Max Verstappen. I mean, it was another masterclass by Max. And, you know, he really, once he got the lead, he was never really going to be challenged. He never, you know, there was never anybody right behind Norris. Never really got right up to the back of him where, you know, you could see if he could make a mistake or something like that. Like, there was just no, 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 no. He got in front. That was it. Goodbye. See you later. And, I mean, Max is driving. He's at the top of his game right now. I don't, I see another championship at the end of this tunnel. I don't see anybody challenging him right now. And I don't know if anybody's going to challenge him next year either. It's just one of those things where they got the regulations right. They got everything right. Max is driving superbly. And they, a soft drink company is beating all these great, historic Formula One teams. It's already bad enough that Ben Suleiman was caught in the paddock talking with Christian Horner. I, I don't understand this and I don't like it. And I don't think that people in the FIA should have links to people in Formula One. I mean, they, they I guess they take a lot of their personnel from former employees from different teams. I understand that. But I think the president should be an impartial person. I don't think he should be seen like sitting next to principals. I don't think he should be seen like buddy, buddy and yucking it up with principals. It's kind of like in American football. We, we have a commissioner, but you don't see pictures and video of him yucking it up with team owners you just see the commissioner and he might be in the booth with you know other people that work in the commission's office but you rarely see him walking around talking with you know art model or any of the other owners of of the nfl so i don't really understand how formula one just allows this this system where it's just we're gonna take the guy who used to drive for Red Bull in a different series and make him the president. I, I just don't understand. And you can see it just doesn't look good in my estimation. I think he should be more of a hands away or arm's length away from all these people. And I just don't think it's a good look. They publicize it a lot. So it makes the conspiracy theories people go wild. I, I don't think not only I don't think it's a good look, but... That's another reason why I think the FIA in Formula One, should, Formula One should be self-governing. That's what I think. Next week, we have coming up the Miami Grand Prix. Ferrari is going to do a special livery. They're going to go do a blue livery for the Miami race, which is going to be awesome. And hopefully there'll be some blue Ferrari merch running around here. And since a lot of us... Out there are going to the Miami Grand Prix. I think it's going to be quite the sight to see Ferrari Blue on track. Also, next week, we got coming up a special interview we did with GT America's Mercedes AMG 43 car, Alex, Vo driven by Alex Vogo. Alex Vogo drives the 43 car for OnlyFans Racing in the GT America class. And he drives a Mercedes AMG car. We did a great interview with him up in Sonoma when they did testing. And so we're going to play that interview for you guys next week. And tune in for that. It'll be a special America F1 episode with Alex Fogo. Drives for Mercedes AMG in the 43 OnlyFans racing car. That'll be next week. Just remember, everyone, to tune in, like, subscribe, tell your friends, give us a comment, and 
above all else, keep on racing, everybody. <laughs>